Whenever we are given a pre-trained model, such as Llama or GPT, in most cases, we can just get away with a little bit of prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is all about cleverly constructing your query to the LLM. Now, good prompts get far better results compared to an ordinary prompt. For example, if I ask the model, what are the qualities of a good model? Then it assumes I'm asking about a fashion model and it starts replying saying physical attributes, confidence, professionalism, adaptability, etc. But if I provide a little bit of context and ask what are the qualities of a LLM model, now it responds with the answer I was after, which is large vocabulary, contextual understanding, fluency, consistency, etc. In another example, if we ask LLM a domain specific question, in this case finance or economics, and ask the model, how long is the current inflation likely to last? It gives factual responses with different inflation scenarios, such as short-term inflation, moderate inflation, higher inflation, and hyperinflation without actually giving me a figure. So in these scenarios, the model lacks a clear expertise in a domain or in a particular task. And so we should start thinking about fine tuning the model. In this video, let's look into what is fine tuning and also look at the different steps involved in actually taking a pre-trained model and taking it all the way to a fine tuned model. So what is fine tuning? Now fine tuning is when you actually modify the pre-trained model parameters or the weights. Now fine tuning is useful if you want to make the LLM an expert in a particular domain such as medicine or finance or if you want to make the model an expert in a particular task say conversational AI or summarization then you will have to resort to fine-tuning the model as the end result of fine-tuning you will have a proprietary model that is specific for your organization that has been trained on the data that is specific to you and that you have gathered over a period of time now, in terms of the advantages, fine-tuning generally improves the model performance. It was clearly shown in the Instruct GPT paper, compared to prompt engineering, fine-tuning produces better performance. These scores are based on the score given by human labelers on a scale of 1 to 7. Now, the second advantage of fine-tuning is to do with storing and deploying and serving your models. If you take a pre-trained model, the size and complexity of these models has been increasing exponentially over the past few years. So if you want to deploy this model with ease and if you want to work with lightweight models, then fine tuning is an option. For example, if you fine tune your pre-trained model with LoRa, you will arrive at a fine tuned model that is a much smaller size. And so you should be able to easily deploy these models for any of your use cases. So what are the different steps in fine tuning? The first step involved in fine tuning is selecting a pre-trained model. For this, we have a wide array of models like Llama 2, Vicuna, Alpaca. So even though they're all classed as open source models, the different models do well in different tasks. For example, the Robota model was developed by Facebook was specifically designed for text classification. And so it will do well for problems like sentiment analysis. So if you're tackling sentiment analysis, then you're better off choosing this model compared to any other models. Or if you want a much longer context length, then you're better off choosing long formers, which was designed specifically to tackle a very large context window. The second step towards fine tuning is actually defining the task that you want to fine tune on. For example, if you're a law firm, and you deal with pages and pages of documents every single day, you'll probably have to fine tune for summarization. Now, before deciding to move on to the next steps, you might want to ensure that there is sufficient data to feed these LLM models. In order to avoid overfitting, you might have to ensure that you have hundreds of data points so that these LLM beasts get sufficient data to be trained on. So once you have decided the task that you want to fine tune on, the third step is to actually annotate or label these data. This is the most labor intensive process where you actually need to involve humans for labeling the data. At this stage, all the data you've gathered in the previous stages will go through labeling. Now labeling can be very quick or it can be very time consuming depending on the task that you have chosen. For example, 
If you just want to do sentiment analysis, the labeling can be as simple as just clicking on positive or negative on a user interface, which makes the labeling really fast. But if you are after summarization, then it could be very involved, such as a human labeler going on some user interface and then writing the summaries of these documents, which is quite time consuming. Though this is the most labor intensive stage, by the end of this stage, you will arrive at a data set that is completely proprietary and specific to you and to your organization. The fourth and exciting step is the actual fine tuning process involving the techies in your organization, be it the machine learning engineers or the developers. So all the label data from the previous stage now goes through fine tuning process or the training process. And though the step may involve only a few lines of code, it could be quite challenging to sort of tweak these parameters that are involved in training and producing a successful fine tuned model. So this step may involve experimentation with different parameters that are involved with the training. For example, there can be one model which is trained with a learning rate of 0.01 and that can be another model which is trained with a learning rate of 0.5. And so you will want to try out different parameters to find out which best suits the fine tuning for your data. In case you're expecting the fine tuned model to be available in the first run of the training, you simply got it wrong. It's slightly more involved than that. And the machine learning engineers or the data scientists have to go through a few rounds of training in order to arrive at the final model which they believe is the best they can get out of the data that you've given them. And so the next step in fine tuning is actually evaluating your model. For evaluation, you first need to choose what metric you're concerned about. For example, if you're doing text classification or sentiment classification, then you will probably be after the accuracy of the model. But if you're building a conversational bot, then you should be more after the F1 score rather than the accuracy. So, but remember customer is God, and so the ultimate evaluation of your model is to address the metric that the customer is concerned about. For example, the conversion rate or the email reduction rate, etc. So with these metrics, there's always a challenge of mapping the technical metrics to that of the metrics that business is concerned about. For example, the technical team, which involves the machine learning engineers, might be optimizing your model for accuracy. But what the business team is concerned about is the conversion rate. And so there's always the gap between the two metrics that the two teams are worried about. And so finding a good mapping between these two metrics is a totally different ball game. I'm not going to go into those details in this video. The result of evaluation can take you in three directions. The first one is deployment, which indicates that you're quite happy with the model and the evaluation results, and you now want to get your model out there in production and serve it for your customer. The second is collating sufficient data. You may look into the results of evaluation and decide that the model is not doing great, and in fact, the performance has come down compared to the pre-trained model, in which case you'll have to collate more data, and then you'll have to go through the annotation process, and you again have to go through the training pipeline and then eventually you will have to do the evaluation. Now the third direction that you can go is go to the pre-trained model itself. So you may think that the pre-trained model is not the one that works for you. And so you will have to completely swap the pre-trained model and then look into some other pre-trained model that can work for your data set. So in my opinion, this is the typical life cycle of fine tuning an LLM from taking all the way from pre-trained to deploying to production. I hope that was useful. In the upcoming videos, let's do some hands-on on fine tuning and see how we can sort of come up with a model that does better than the pre-trained model. So please stay tuned for that and we'll see you in my next video. Until then, take care.